Hey there guys, this particular video is going to be dedicated to helping you solve an incredibly challenging dynamics problem. It's challenging because it's something you might expect to see in your final exam because it tests so many different types of um, parts which make up your course. It'll test, for example, friction, it will test F equals MA, F equals MA, it will test moments of inertia, and also test your ability to solve several different equations simultaneously. So here's the particular problem. Let's say that we've got this large mass, which I'm going to call mass 2 from now on in. And let's say it's accelerating downwards, and we're asked to find that acceleration. We know we can find it based off um, the given information. It's wrapped around the outer part of this pulley, which has a radius r2. Whereas this mass m is wrapped around the inner part of the pulley, which is a radius r1. And it's also sliding along this incline, which does have friction. All the values we need are right here. Okay, that being said, have a shot at this yourself first and come back when you're done. Okay, well, I'm going to be solving this problem by first drawing what you should have done, a free body diagram. So let's get started. Let's draw our free body diagram. Let's draw our free body diagram. Let's draw our free body diagram. It'll look like this. This is going to be our mass M1 sliding up the slope. Notice that gravity will be acting downwards of M1G. There will also be a normal force perpendicular to the path N. And because the block is sliding up the slope, that means there will be a friction force acting down the slope of mu KN. It's mu K because it's moving. So hence we're dealing with the um, static coefficient, um, sorry, the kinetic coefficient of friction. Um, not only that, but we also have a tension force in the rope T1, which is going to be up the hill as well. That's because the string is taut. Okay. Um, that being said, I'm also going to define an axis. I'm going to define this axis. I'll call this X prime, and I will call this Y prime. I'm calling. I'm have, I'm putting a prime at the above because X has already been saved for our second mass. Speaking of which, let's deal with our second mass now. We know it looks like this. This is our second mass. It has a force due to gravity downwards, which is M2G, and it has a force due to gravity, sorry, and it is a force due to the tension in the rope, which is T2. Notice the tensions are different. That's because the strings themselves are actually different, right? Um, and, and they're wrapped around different parts. They're completely different um, uh, objects, so they have different tensions. We're not completely done with the free body diagrams yet. For starters, we know it. this is defined as x downwards like this, but we also know we have to deal with our free body diagram of the pulley itself. Let's draw that. This is our pulley just here. I'm going to try and make that as circular as possible. We know we're going to deal with um, a force acting downwards here of T2 just here. We also know we're going to deal with a tension force which is going to be in this direction T1, and lastly, and arguably leastly, our reaction forces will be at our pin support just here, which is going to be our Y here, our X here, and of course, because we're, because we're not assuming the pulley is massless, um, there will be a force M of your pulley, which I'll call MP, times by G. So that is your free body diagram. Now let's see if we can solve this problem um, by analyzing each of these free body diagrams individually. First, let's start off with writing the sum of forces of our first block in the x prime direction must be equal to m1 times a x prime. That's Newton's second. Let, in order to do this, let's deconstruct mg. We know that, I'll do that over to the side, this is going to be m1g. This is going to be our component in the x prime direction, or I should say negative x prime direction, and this will be our component in the y prime direction. We know this is theta, which means that we know this is theta, which means that we know this is going to be m1g cosine theta, which means we know this is going to be m1g sine theta. I hope that makes sense. Okay, we can do this all in one step now if we wanted to. That means the left-hand side will evaluate into T1 minus the component of gravity, which is M1G sine theta, minus your friction, which is mu K times by N, and we just know N is just going to be equal to M1G cosine theta. We can evaluate that by taking the sum of forces in the Y direction, must be equal to zero. Okay, and we know that's going to be equal to M1AX dash the uh, right hand side of that equation. This is going to be useful, but it's not useful yet. This is what I'll call equation one. We still need more information to solve for our values of interest. 
In particular, let's start analyzing our second free body diagram. And to do that, let's analyze the sum of forces in the x direction is equal to mAx. Right? Well, because x is defined to be downwards, that means we'll be dealing with m2g first, and then subtracting that from t2, and that's going to be equal to mAx. I should really write that as m2. I should write that as m2, and that's going to be our equation 2. I hope that makes sense. Let me not box it in. Okay, now let's deal with our last simultaneous equation, which is going to be from the pulley. We could, if we wanted to, deal with the sum of forces is equal to zero. Um, we could, because we know the pulley isn't accelerating in any direction. We could do that if we wanted to. It would be useless, though. All that would help us solve is our reaction forces, Rx and Ry. Instead, it would be more useful to evaluate the sum of torques about point O. This is point O, by the way. Um, and, and let that equal to I alpha. So let's do that. We know that the sum of torques about point O is equal to the moment of inertia of your object about point O times by your angular acceleration. Now let's, let's talk about what our angular acceleration is. We know that our mass M2 is accelerating downwards, which means that our pulley must have an angular acceleration in the clockwise direction, right? Um, so considering this, that means we'll be dealing with um, when we expand this out, it will look like this. This will be T2 times by its perpendicular distance, which is going to be R2, and we're going to be subtracting that from T1 times by R1, right? Um, that's because these, these, these forces produce torques in different directions. And that's going to be equal to your moment of inertia of your pulley about its center of mass, O, times by your angular acceleration. I'm going to call that equation 3. Okay, we've got three equations, but we're not completely there yet. We still need a way to reconcile the differences between AX and AX prime. In order to do this, we need to have a good understanding of um, our accelerations and angular accelerations. So first, let's start off with this. We know that our acceleration of our lighter block, AX dash, is going to be equal to its radius of curvature, R1, times by the angular acceleration of the pulley, alpha. So far, so good. That's going to be in, in, the, in the x dash direction, right? We also know that ax is going to be equal to r2 times by that same alpha. We can eliminate the alphas real quick, and we're left with a condition that ax must be equal to r2 on r1 times by ax dash. This, these three equations are going to be useful too. I'll call this equation 4, I'll call this equation 5, and I'll call them equation 6. I've left them all in red because they're really similar to each other. In fact, um, equation 6 is derived from the previous two. Um, considering this, these simultaneous equations, we can solve them all. We know that if we plug, if we plug equation 1, equation 2, and equation three, and equation, uh, and equation five, and equation five, um, into, into equation three, into equation three, sorry, there shouldn't be an equation three here. If we plug one, two, and five into equation three, then we're left with the following result. Here it is, we're left with the acceleration x, that's the acceleration of our larger mass traveling downwards, is equal to this beast just here, right? And to reiterate this, this is just by um, solving for t1 in your first equation, plugging it into your third equation, solving for t2 in your second equation, and plugging into your third equation, and then solving for alpha in your fifth equation, and plugging into your third equation. I haven't gone through the maths of this, mainly because it would take too long, and secondly, because I think the algebra is the least difficult part of this particular type of problem. Anyway, once you solve for this particular value, then you're left with the solution that AX must be equal to 2.21 meters per second squared. That is your answer just here for your acceleration of your large block. Now, um, I'll be covering the other problems in a, in a different video. Um, that's the velocity and whatnot. Um, I just want to end on a final note that this value could have also been solved using energy analysis.